Last year, Washington went on to win the Pac-12 North, but were unable to play in the conference championship game. Instead, they had to watch their division rivals Oregon hoist the Pac-12 championship trophy. Going into this season, they will look to win the fight for the championship they missed out on last year. But will they have that opportunity? Let's talk about that. We are now only 26 days away from the start of the college football season, meaning we are in prime preview season for college football. Throughout the months of July and August, I will be previewing every college football program. Yes, all 130, and in this episode, I will be covering Washington. Last year, the Washington Huskies went 3-1 and and won the Pac-12 North, but were unable to play in the Pac-12 championship due to COVID protocol. This year, they returned 82% of their production from last year, which ranks 15th nationally. On offense, they returned 91% of their production, which ranks 7th nationally, and on defense, they returned 73% of their production, which ranks 61st nationally. Second-year head coach Jimmy Lake has a 3-1 and career record. He spent four seasons as a team defensive coordinator before taking over the head coaching duties after Chris Peterson's departure. Before that, he spent the previous 14 seasons mostly as a defensive back coach at the college and NFL levels. Offensive coordinator John Donovan took over the offensive coordinator position in 2020. He was the offensive coordinator at Vanderbilt from 2011 to 2013 and the Penn State offensive coordinator from 2014 to 2015. He spent the previous four years as an offensive assistant for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Co-defensive coordinator Bob Gregory enters his eighth year at Washington after being promoted from the special teams coach slash inside linebacker coach. And Akaikai Malloy enters his second year as the co-defensive coordinator after spending the 2016 and 2019 season as the defensive line coach. On offense, they return seven starters. Quarterback Dylan Morris beat out three other quarterbacks to win the starting job last year. He was mistake-free and guided Washington to three wins and a chance to win in their fourth game. He is the shortest first-unit Huskies quarterback in three and a half decades and could be a future four-year starter. They also added five-star recruit Sam Heward, check out my video on him in the description below, who won't go down without a fight. Along with that, they added Colorado State transfer Patrick O'Brien as well, who started 12 games at Colorado State. At running back, Jimmy Lake likes his bigger backs. In 2019, Richard Newton rushed for 498 yards and 10 touchdowns. Last year, he had 23 carries for 122 yards and 2 touchdowns. Sixth-year senior Sean McGrew led the team with 43 carries for 277 yards and 4 touchdowns last year. Sixth-year senior Kamari Pleasant rushed for 144 yards and 3 touchdowns on 34 carries. This is a deep and talented unit. When it comes to the receivers, first-team tight end Cade Oten returns and could be the best blocking tight end in the country. He was the only player with double-digit catches last year, having 18 for 258 yards and 3 touchdowns. The unit struggled with drops last year, but have 8 players returning with starting experience. They had Texas Tech transfer Jalen Polk, who had 264 receiving yards and 7 starts as a true freshman. They're a young but talented group. On the offensive line, all 5 starters return from the largest offensive line in school history. Their average height is 6'5", and they weigh an average of 323 pounds. Last year, they averaged 176 rushing yards per game and only gave up one sack. Going into this season, they combined for 80 starts returning. On the defensive side of the ball, they returned 7 starters. The defensive line should be able to get pressure up front. They have players returning from injury that could make instant impacts, but they let up 161 rushing yards per game last year, which they will look to improve on this year. They had Texas A&M transfer Jeremiah Martin and should do better against the run this year. At linebacker, they lost their entire starting unit going into last year as the lone starter opted out. First team, Pac-12, Zion Topolo Fatui recorded 7 sacks in 4 games but tore his Achilles in the spring and could be out for the year. They had Oklahoma transfer Brendan Radley Hiles and will count on some young talented players this year. They will have Ryan Bowman back this year though. When it comes to the secondary, Jimmy Lake is known for producing NFL talent. They lose cornerback Keith Taylor and a backup, but five players return with starting experience. Second team Pac-12 player Trent McDuff returns and could be an NFL guy. Bill Steele rates this as the number five rated secondary in the country. When it comes to scholarship players on the special teams, they are too deep for kicking. When you look at their schedule, the Oregon game could decide who wins the Pac-12 North, 
And that was the deciding factor when I was looking at the Pac-12 North this year. Bill Steele projects them to have the 58th hardest schedule in the nation, as Athlon projects them to go 9-3 and 6-3 and and in conference, and ESPN projects them to win 9.3 games and 6.8 conference games. I project them to go 10-2 and two this season and go 8-1 and one in conference. I see them beating Montana, but then going on the road and losing to Michigan in Week 2. But don't be surprised if they do actually pull the quote-unquote upset over the Michigan Wolverines this year. Then I believe they go on a three-game win streak going into their bye, beating Arkansas State, California, and at Oregon State. And coming out of their bye, I think they continue that win streak, winning three more games, beating UCLA at Arizona and at Stanford, who will be off their bye, before losing to Oregon in a very crucial game of the season. Then I think they finish the season on a three-game win streak, beating Arizona State, going on the road and beating Colorado, and beating Washington State in the season finale, finishing the season 10-2 and 8-1 in conference. If they are able to pull wins over Oregon and Michigan, they could be in the conversation for the college football playoffs. But what do you think? How will Washington do this season? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos in the preview series. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.